Hi everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, to my old viewers. To my new viewers. Oh. <laughs> um, thank you for being with me today. Ah, I, I come to you exhausted but happy. Um, yeah, S slight sniffle, but it's probably something I ate. I have all kinds of food allergies. You would never know, though. And Oh, these plums seem to be... Remember last time I talked about these plums? They look like they're in better shape. I have to taste one and see, but we won't do that online in case it's a... Oh! So, what's going on? What's on my table? My updates are first. What? What did you say? I didn't hear that. I'll think about it. We'll get to that. If not at the end of this video, then the next one. But let's get back to what's on my table. And let me update you. Remember this? Knitted on the 96 cylinder. It has stretch and give that the 72 cylinder cuff does not have. And so I'm like, oh God, there's got to be a better way or else I'll spend my life swapping out cylinders. You see, I knew when I bought blue, I should have bought two. Because at the time he was selling, excuse me, black, red, and then blue. I should have gotten a red one and a blue one. Too late now. Which reminds me, someone wants to buy my machine. I thank you, but Blue and I have been fighting for so many years. We're like an old married couple at this point. There's no point in splitting us up. But if you want to, go on Dave Lord's webpage. Just, just do a Google search. Dave Law, Lord, L-O-R-D, Circular Sock Machines. It should come up. Um, cause I believe they open their list up because they know how many machines they'll make in a year. And if you make that lucky cut, you can get a machine. Okay. But getting back to this, huh? Two things. I wish I had a second blue, but I have two other sock machines. So maybe instead of swapping out, I'll just do the cuff on blue and then put this either on Steve, the Steeber, or if I ever get that sock that's on Speedy, that's been there for six months, if I get it off, I can just switch to that because the swapping out cylinders is annoying, okay? I know, there are a lot of things that annoy me. Do I want things easy? Yes, okay? So, according to the expert, and I will listen, I just have to swap out cylinders. I thought there was some other easy, like turn up the tension. Of the, it's like, no, you've noticed when you turn up the tension, the stitches, fall, well, not the, but some stitches fall off the machine. So that's the solution to that, which has me thinking, maybe I need a 120 um, needle cylinder. And that would give me a 60 slot ribber maybe maybe i'll inquire that might be my birthday gift to myself okay so that solved the dilemma if i'm making over the knee or knee high socks i have to start on the the cuff on the 96 okay so it is what it is and then what else did i do oh this I'm going to take this out. I'm going to show it to you first, but I'm going to pull this out. I was sitting around and I had a thought. And that was, why not mix sock yarn and non-sock yarn? In this case, I used acrylic. And I'm going to hold the waste yarn up here so you don't have to see it. And this is sock yarn. I forget who did it. This is what it looks like. I'm sure when it's combed, I'm sure, and you can, you see how cracked this cone is? This cone is like 20 years old. 
<laughs> it's about to give up the ghost. Okay. Anyway. Sock yarn. Oh, I was like, what's that hanging? Is the blue going into the pink? I was like, hmm? And then this is just plain acrylic yarn. And then back to sock yarn. You could do this with wool. You could do it with anything. Because think about it, when you make a sock, the part that gets the most wear and tear is down here. And the other part that you have most concerns about is the cuff. So if you use your good yarn, whatever it is you deem your good yarn to be, you can use it strategically and then put the not so, well, a different quality yarn, let's call it that. You could use a different quality yarn for the leg because the leg of the socks doesn't get the kind of wear and tear that a foot or a cuff might, okay? But when I did this, I thought this was an awesome combination till I pulled it off the machine. And the blue works, the white works, and the pink works. But the red clashes, so it's not a har to me, it's not a harmonious sock. So I'm going to take this out. And at some point, I will get lucky and the rest of this yarn that's in my house will find me so I can make socks. I love it. I should one day try and dye this color because this is awesome. Okay. And you see, I took it. I went on a trip. I took it with me to Kitchener Clothes. But I looked at it and I was like, nah. So what else is happening? Oh, let me tell you. I bought yarn. Ah. I didn't buy a lot. I only bought a little bit, but I did buy yarn. Yes. Okay. I wanted to try this because it's been coming up. Is it in Facebook or Instagram? In one of those feeds. I swear to God, it's like the ad is stalking me. It's like, there she goes and up pops the ad. And I scroll on by and here it comes again. Oh, it, talk about a movie terrorized by yarn. Okay. Um, what did I get? I bought some cotton collage. Now this is interesting because this yarn is 46% cotton, 33% super fine merino wool, and the rest is polymede. I, I want to try this out and wash it just to see what it does. Because cotton likes to pill. I don't know that cotton and wool are a harmonious marriage or even a relationship. What else did I get? Oh, this. They're running ads for this. I don't know if this is absolutely wonderful yarn or they're just trying to get rid of it. So I bought some fruits, but this is polyester. And that's all right. Oh, no, it's acrylic. And that's all right because I do have people who are allergic to wool. And what else did I? I bought two of each, mind you. And then I bought this for the color. What is this? Hold on. Made in Turkey. All yarn seems to be made in Turkey, even when it comes from Peru. What is this? It's 100 gram. Oh, this is bamboo and cotton. This I have to try because I intend to retire early and to retire to a warm part of the world. And I don't know that I'll need wool socks there, but maybe a cotton bamboo blend would be good. And these, look at these colors. This is very nice. And what's this called? Bamboo pop. Knit, relax, smile, repeat. That sounds good. <laughs> so there are two of each of these in here. So I didn't go crazy, but I bought yarn. Yes. Um, now. I am in heaven. Let me tell you, I went to a cranking yesterday. Yesterday afternoon, for some reason, I sat down on my bed and apparently at some point I lay down and I went to sleep. And this was a bad thing because this was three o'clock in the, not yesterday, Saturday. This was a bad thing because it was three o'clock in the afternoon and when I opened my eyes, it was 9.30. So I slept for six and a half hours. 
that's bad for two reasons. Well, I don't know. Well, it's bad for one reason, but it's strange. I normally only sleep for five hours. Okay? My body requires five hours of sleep, and I pop up like a top no matter where I am in the world. Five hours, I'm done. So I don't know what was up with that hour and a half. When I saw the time, I groaned because I knew that yesterday or the following day, Sunday, I was going to a cranking. Yay! Anyway, I'm up at that point, right? So 9 30, 10 30, 11 30, midnight, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 3 30. The clock is watching me. Sometime between 3 45 and 4 o'clock, I fell asleep and I need to wake up at 7 a.m. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to miss this cranking. I fell asleep and I woke up at 7 13 a.m. You should have seen me. It then became a mad dash because I needed to leave the house by 7.30. So I had 17 minutes. Thank God I packed the machine, which was my steeper. I packed the yarn, the things I was going to do on the train, my water. All I had to do was grab a snack from the refrigerator. And I I ran around doing all that I wanted, to, all that I needed to do. Instead of 17 minutes, it took me 27. But I ran out of here and I'm running up the block to try and get the train. The train in theory is three blocks away, but each block, one block is two, actually the length of two blocks. The other block is the length of three blocks. Then there's this one. So that's like six blocks. Then I have to cross the street and go into the train station. When I'm half a block away, I see the uptown train coming. I said, I'm done. Once I've seen that uptown train, the downtown train is on its way and I'm going to miss it. And so as I'm, I'm still trying to, I see a reflection, I hear a noise, there's the downtown train. By the time I'm across the street from the train station, the downtown train is going past me and waving. I'm like, no, it's a Sunday morning. The next train is in 12 minutes. And it was freezing. <laughs> I mean, it was cold. When it's cold, I can tell you it's cold because I'm normally not cold. So I'm standing on the platform and I'm waiting for the next train. 12 minutes go by, no train. 20 minutes later, the train comes. I'm like, I'm going to miss the train that's going to take me to Trenton, okay? Because that train leaves at 9.04. Finally, after that 20 minutes, the train comes and we slowly go down. When we get downtown, I have nine minutes to catch the train to Trenton. And I am struggling, I'm pulling a suitcase, I've got my backpack, the ticket machine is not working. I, three ticket machines later, I finally get a ticket, okay? And I'm like, my God, I must have like three minutes to get to this train. <sighs> and so I go to look at the board to see what track number this train to Trenton is on. What does it say? Train leaving 914. So for some reason, the train is 10 minutes late. So that's a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing because I don't have to stress myself to run for this train with two minutes. So I do a couple of sweeps around the place. And next thing I know, it's time to go for the train. I get on. I get help from a professor on his way to Trenton. God bless him. And we're off. I get to Trenton, I jump in an Uber, I go to Pennsylvania, and I'm at a cranking. Oh my God, it was awesome. One, it was great to see people I haven't seen since October of 2019. And there were so many different machines there. I got a cl up close and personal look at the LT150. I won't be buying one unless I win the lottery. 
um, I got to look at the true knit. It's an awesome machine. If you were a beginner, that is an excellent machine for you. Okay. If you're experienced too, it just, it just works well right away. The ribbon, no problem. It's like, and then I got to try a home profit machine. Oh my goodness. It's an oldie, but a goodie. That machine knit like butter. I was like, oh, and I, did I make anything at the cram queen? Absolutely not. I ran around in everyone's machine, sitting down, cranking at their machines, looking. I did everything but climb into the boxes with all the knickknacks and things that people bring to a crank in. I saw different tools that I would like to, which reminds me of this. A young lady had one of these. You could see the pin vise part, but it had been covered with an, a pretty acrylic. And it had a handle like the circular sock machine, so it was really comfy in the hand. And I must say, maybe it's because it's been so long, it really was a wonderful cranking for me. I got to ask questions and get some answers. And I got to try out all those different machines. I loved it. That's why if anyone says to you, what's the best circular sock machine out there? The answer is the one you have that works, okay? It was wonderful. And I'm out of time, so bye!